Congratulations, you've just purchased the finest thermoplastic extrusion welder in the world. Since its founding in 1958, Wegener has evolved over four decades from a small engineering firm into the world's leading manufacturer of welding equipment. In addition to our extrusion welders, we offer a full line of hand welders and fully automatic bending and butt welding machines. Whatever the application, you can count on Wegener to deliver quality. We've been in the business of making thermoplastic welding equipment since there have been thermoplastics to weld. And nobody does it better. Wegener offers a full line of extrusion welders with a model to meet any application and all of our equipment meets or exceeds the guidelines established by the German Welding Society DVS. While our Mini, Alpha and Beta models each offer unique features, the actual welding process is the same with all models. In this demonstration, we're using the Alpha model extrusion welder and the DT5 blower. The Alpha extrusion welder has the best weight output ratio in the market. Select the appropriate welding rod for your application. For extrusion welding, it is necessary for the rod to be fed from a spool. Rod sizes for the Alpha extruder are listed in the manual. Another critical point to observe is the use of a clean air source. Wegener blowers produce the correct volume of clean air, essential for a quality weld. The DT5 is a heavy-duty model and is virtually maintenance-free, requiring only an occasional filter change to keep the unit running in top form. Next, be sure to have the included accessories handy, such as the welding shoes and Allen wrench set. First, select and install the correct shoe for your application onto the end of the gun. In this demonstration, we are using a shoe designed for a T-joint, which has already been tack welded. The size and the configuration of the weld are determined by the configuration of the Teflon shoe. Adjust the preheat extension, bringing it as close as possible to the base material without allowing it to touch the material during operation. Next, slip the gun's hose onto the blower's brass fitting and tighten the clamp as shown. Connect the gun to a 220 volt power source. Once connected, it will perform a brief self-diagnostic check. When this is complete, you may program the unit for your application. First, set the air temperature by pressing the PGM button until SP1 is displayed. Using the up-down arrows, set your desired air temperature. Once finished, confirm your setting by again pressing the PGM button. Next, set the extrusion screw temperature. Using the up-down arrows, set your desired extrusion screw temperature. Once finished, confirm your setting by again pressing the PGM button. And finally, the exit button. Note that as an added safety feature, the trigger will remain locked until the correct temperature has been reached. The material-specific temperature settings as recommended by DVS can be found in the Wegener manual. Avoid touching any metal part of the unit and never allow your skin to come in contact with the barrel until it is fully cooled. Next, purge the gun to free the chamber of old materials as shown. To achieve a cosmetically pleasing smooth start of the extrusion surface, run the unit for a moment along a piece of scrap material to warm up the Teflon shoe. It is necessary to preheat the starting point by fanning the hot air onto the parent material. Now, pull the trigger and begin to weld. As you apply some pressure, you will feel the emerging extruded pushing the gun forward. This is due to the design of the welding shoe, which has a nipple in the front preventing the material from flowing in the forward direction of the weld. To ensure correct base material temperature, it is imperative to check the plastification of the base material. This is done by poking into the weld area right underneath the air outlet in front of the welding shoe. Assure that even pressure is applied onto both sheets of the weld zone. An even, matte-finished haze line should be visible right next to the weld area and there should be no sign of splashing. Welding too fast will cause the extruded to thin out resulting in a bad weld, which will require removal and re-welding. Welding too slowly won't necessarily result in a bad weld, however the resulting weld may be cosmetically unacceptable. When finished, cut the welding rod, purge the gun until the motor runs free, and take a piece of welding rod to clean out the front of the Teflon shoe. Disconnect the machine from the power, but allow the air to run for a few minutes to cool down the element. 